All right, we're going to be discussing uh, variations of conditional statements and taking a look at how they relate uh, to each other. So we're going to be seeing uh, this uh, statement right here. If it rained today, then the streets are wet. And uh, here is our P. And here is our Q. And uh, we have some variations of how these things are put together. So uh, let's just, by the way, see how this P and Q are put together. Okay. So uh, it's not working. Here we go. Here's P and here's Q. And true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false. Now we learned uh, earlier with a variation of the conditional that the only way a conditional statement can be false is if the condition is met and the promise is not kept. So this part is false and all the rest of these parts are true. Okay. Uh, and so what we want to understand is that this is actually called right here, this is called the positive form. Okay. Here's our positive form of the conditional. If it rained today, then the uh, streets are wet. And uh, now we're going to uh, look at another way we could arrange this. Suppose I said um, if uh, Q then P, and that would be uh, if the streets are wet, streets are wet, then it rained today. Now, I'm going to ask you, uh, does this mean the same thing as this? If the streets are wet, and then it rained today, is that the same as saying, if it rained today, uh, then the streets are wet. Uh, and uh, you need to be uh, quite careful because uh, this is sneaky. This is sneaky, right? Uh, so let's just see. Well, if true, then true is true. If true, then false is false. If false, then true is true. Why? Because no condition was met, and so uh, the person could do whatever uh, like or whatever happens will happen. If false, then false is true. This form right here is called the converse form, okay? And all the converse form does is switch the positions. Uh, and it doesn't mean the same thing. Okay. Well, about half the time you have the same thing, but notice what's going on in here. These values are interchanged. Um, so uh, the converse and the positive form are not equivalent. Two statements are only equivalent if they have exactly the same truth value. And these do not have exactly the same truth value. Well then, how about this statement, okay? So we're going to say, uh, well, if it didn't rain today, then the streets are not wet, okay? Well, of course, you can see that this is not P, and this is not Q. And so we can ask ourselves, well, what is this? You know, uh, is this the same thing as this? Does it mean this? So am I saying if it didn't rain today, then the streets aren't wet? Well, I could actually take a look uh, over here. Here is where it rained today, and here is where it didn't rain today, and here's where it didn't rain today, are the streets wet? Well, 
possible the streets could be anywhere, as possible they aren't, and both statements would be true. So obviously, um, that that's not quite the case. So I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and and parse this out as a uh, truth uh, in, the, in the truth table. If it didn't rain uh, today, then the streets are not wet. So we're looking at if not P, then not Q. So we have to consider a couple things here, all right? We'll sort of slip them in here. Here's not P. We're going to put in not P at the moment. And that's going to be false, false, true, true, okay? And not Q. Not Q would be false, true, false, true. So let's go ahead and uh, fill in those pieces. Well, if false and false is true, if false and true is true, how do I know that? Well, I know if false and false is true, if false and true is true. Okay. How about if true then false? Well, that's always false. The condition was met, the promise was not kept, so that's false. How about if true then true? That's true. Okay, well guess what? Look at this. Can you see that this form means the same as that form? This form right here is called the inverse. Okay, that's called the inverse. And with the inverse, the inverse has exactly the same truth values, truth, uh, truth statements, as the converse. And can you see then these two forms are equivalent? So let's put this, uh, these values right here. Uh, true, true, false, true, 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 false, true, right there. Well, there is one more form that we need to talk about, and it's called the contrapositive, contrapositive, okay? And uh, it goes like this. If not Q, then not P, okay? If not Q, then not P. Now, if not Q, then not P would be if uh, false, then false. If not Q, then not P would be if true, then false. If not Q, then not P would be if false, then true. And if not Q, then not P would be if true, then true. Let's see, if false, then false is true. Get that from here. If true, then false is false. If false, then true is true. And if true, then true is true. Well, can you see what our results are right here? This is exactly the same thing as the positive form. The contrapositive and the positive forms are equivalent because they have exactly the same truth values. So these are variations of the conditional. The converse and the inverse do not mean the same thing as the positive form. Occasionally when we're working with rules of logic and talking about argument, we have to form some of these statements. So if I'm trying to find uh, out whether a, a conditional statement, like uh, if the sum of the numbers is even, uh, then the numbers are even, uh, I could form a contrapositive statement and solve it that way. And as, as long as I solve the contrapositive, then I have solved the positive form because both of those are equivalent. Similarly, if I'm looking at converse or inverse, I can do it, I can do those. 
So these statements are equivalent and these statements are equivalent and that deals with our variations of the condition. All right, we have one more thing which we need to talk about here in this uh, section of dealing with the rules of logic. And uh, this deals with something called the biconditional, and we would like to understand what the biconditional is and what it means and how to evaluate it. The biconditional goes, uh, it's, it looks like this symbolically, okay? And we write P if and only uh, if Q. Okay. So let's use a uh, 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 let's use a, an example here. So uh, you may go out to play if and only if you eat your broccoli. Okay. So you may go out to play if and only if you eat your broccoli. Well, let's see. What is the P value here? You may go out to play. Right there's our P. Uh, you eat your broccoli. That's our Q. All right. So we'll mind our P's and Q's, and uh, we'll see if we can figure out uh, what that means. Okay. So here is uh, P, here is Q, here's P, if and only if, uh, Q, true, true, false, false, true, false, true, false, okay? So, uh, you may go out to eat if and only if you eat your broccoli. Uh, you uh, uh, go out to play. Uh, you've eaten your broccoli. They're both true. Absolutely, you can go out to play. Here, you can see that this is a kind of condition for this to be met, right? And so, uh, you may go out to play if and only if you, you didn't eat your broccoli. I'm sorry. There is no way I'm going to let you go out to play uh, if you didn't eat your broccoli because it says you may go out to play if and only if you did eat your broccoli. So this is uh, false. Uh, well, here you may go out to play if and only if you eat your broccoli. If you ate your broccoli, is there a way I can legitimately deny you from going out to play? And the answer is no. Okay. So this part is uh, false. I have essentially guaranteed that going out to play and eating your broccoli mean exactly the same thing. You know, you get to do one if you have done the other. Okay? You may not do one if you have not done the other. So here, yeah, you may not go out to play. Uh, you did not eat your broccoli. Well, this is a just punishment right here. Okay, so this is a true statement right there. Uh, here is uh, the essential meaning. P is, has the same truth value as Q. You can think of it as sort of an equal sign. Uh, does P have the same truth value as true? Yes. Does P have the same truth value as Q here? No. Does P have the same truth value as Q here? No. And does P have the same truth value as Q here? And the answer is no. All right. So you can see uh, what we have there. Well, uh, this biconditional actually sort of looks like two arrows. It looks like an if P thing Q. And it looks like, essentially look at this, an if Q then P. Now, you know, we, I, we don't write that like that, do we? Okay, but it's still the same idea. So here we'll do if Q then P. Uh, but you can see we possibly could uh, draw the letter backwards. Um, it looks like it in there. So if P then Q, what do we know about if P then Q? Well, we know that if a conditional is only false if the condition is met and the promise is not kept. So this, uh, this thing here is this. 
Here is this is the condition. Here is the promise. Okay. So where is the condition met and the promise not kept? The condition is met. I kept my promise. Here the condition is met and the promise is not kept. So that part's false there. And these are true. Okay. Now notice that if I put these together with an and statement, okay, if I put these together with an and statement, all right, notice true and true is true, false and true is false, true and false is false, true and true is true, and uh, here's this, it's the same thing as that. This is saying essentially if P then Q and if Q then P. If you want to go out to play, if you may go out to play, then you will eat your broccoli. And if you eat your broccoli, then you may go out to play. And it puts it both together, and it's a very, very hard and fast way of making sure that what you want to get done gets done before the promise is kept. Okay. Uh, does that make sense? I hope that it does. You have yourself a good day.